And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me. I am here with the one and only Amy Lee of Evanescence. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, trust me. It's my pleasure having you here. Somebody who has uh, been a fan of yours since uh, way back in the day, 2003 or something like 2002. Uh, it's a real joy to be able to talk to you today. And uh, in 2020 of all years, this would be the year that I get to finally <laughs> interact with you. Here we are. Something about just the worst times ever is what attracts me as an artist and person, I guess. Well... Okay, that's a fair point, I suppose. That does seem to influence a lot of music and artistic uh, uh, behavior. Um, but we're going to talk to you today. we got lots of stuff I want to talk to you about. But first and foremost, we've been playing a song years lately that uh, I am a big fan of for several reasons. We'll get into that. It's called Use My Voice. Um, love this song, first of all. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. And there, first of all, I wanted to ask you just real quick, with that song, Use My Voice, <sighs> It's been like 10 years since we've gotten like an original album from you guys. Yeah. And so we're finally getting back to that. We've had three singles so far. This is the third one. And you, the music so far has been awesome. What's been your inspiration up to this point, getting that whole album of original content? Yet? It's a lot. Um, you know, like you said, we have a lot of time um, and experience to pull from, to put towards this. I'm in a place right now where meaning is at the forefront for me more than a sound more than um like a sonic space or energy it's coming from um putting the meanings and the lyrics kind of in the front of my mind and as a big part of the driving force for my need for music right now um which i maybe that doesn't sound like a big difference but as a as a as a musician like it's fun to just jam you know, yeah, yeah. create music because it feels good to your heart and it doesn't have to have words or, or mean anything that kind of comes later. And that's sort of my comfort zone in general. But um, this time, there's just so much to say. Um, there's so much happening in our world that feels frustrating um, in our country and, and in the world and just feeling so many strong feelings of, of just like an animal in a cage. Um, things need to come out. And on top of that, over the last decade as a band um, and as individual people, we've been through a lot. Um, we've had some serious losses in our band family. Um, and I became a mom, um, just a lot of big life perspective change. So um, I am, music is, I've always said music is my therapy. It's always been true, but I am, remembering and living in it in a very real and real time way right now. I, I make music every day because it is healing my heart. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a beautiful sentiment. That's, I think in a lot of ways, that's what music's supposed to do for you. Uh, in, in, art in general is supposed to do that for you. Um, you did bring up that you became a mom, which by the way, that's, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Thanks. And um, <laughs> I have to ask this. Are you so glad that you became a mom before 2020 when you have stuck inside of them all the time? It, well, maybe this would be a good time, like, because I feel like that first six months or, or so, like, you have to hunker down, like, right. so it's hard to come by. And I feel like I hardly left the house in that time just because that's how it had to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. a you might find that a lot of babies were conceived in this time. It's going to be thank you. the next boom. I think you might be right. There's just, I'm begging nobody, please, nobody nine months from now name your kid Corona. Oh, no, no. Please. No, I not remember. Um, so you said you've been doing music and whatnot, and that's really been healing your heart. You're making music every day, uh, which is amazing. Um, but like you said, you have all this to pull from. But is there anything else you've been doing during this time to keep yourself busy? I mean, we've all kind of had to find hobbies. Like I recently uh, learned how to bake bread. My girlfriend started the garden. And so, see? <laughs> now we know. Did you make your own starter and everything? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was an effort. Alive. But let me tell you this, I, I didn't post everything about making the process because there was a lot of trial and error. So I really just posted when I got it right. That's funny. That's what you do. Yeah. Posting's for just showing yeah. only the good side of things and leaving everything else behind. Um, yeah, I, I did some bread baking myself. I got into, you know, I lived in New York for 13 years and we just moved to Nashville last year. And, um, one of the big things I'm missing is like, Asian food. Like I yeah. love Japanese food. I love all kinds of Asian food and it's just different. And especially now, like it's not that it isn't here, but I mean, it's not New York, but also right. like, especially at the beginning, like we, we don't 
eat out. We don't eat out at all, but we, we haven't even, we didn't even order in for months. It was just like, make your own stuff. And yeah. I, that was what I, I want ramen. Like, how do I, how do I make something? Like, how do I want dumplings? Like, how do I do this? So I totally um, figured out very well. And also simultaneously, my son got really into uh, the Kung Fu Panda franchise. And we watched all those movies a whole bunch. And those dumplings look so good. So I got into like making the dumpling dough and like did a pretty good job making dumplings. Um, so I, I did that a little bit, but you know. Um, but also not to make it all about music, but um, this has been a really cool time for like collaborations coming up because mm. so many artists are stuck at home and needing like something creative, needing to connect. Um, and I've gotten to be a part of a bunch of cool collaborations during this time too, not all of which are out yet. So I, yeah, I was gonna, that was something I was going to bring up actually, because you have, I mean, a laundry list of friends in, in music and whatnot. And uh, we've heard about a lot of other people that have collaborated on things given the situation we're all in because people just want to make music. They just want to do something. Yeah. And you, with this song specifically, you even had a bit of collaboration because you had people like your mom, the Pretty Reckless, Lindsay Hale, the Hale Storm, uh, Lindsay Sterling, an amazing violinist that if you're not familiar with, I'm telling you right now, look her up. Yeah. Uh, and all lended voices or, or something. Uh, this song, uh, yeah, Dina Jacob, um, and there's a few other people I know I'm missing. But yeah. So many talented uh, women on this song that lend vocals or, or uh, something in the music or composition. And I, I was thinking to myself, man, I wonder if she threw the idea out there of doing more stuff with all of them, like things with their band or, you know, working on a song together in some way. So I, it's nice to hear you say that it's coming in. Stuff's coming in. We don't know about it. Uh, uh, not, not what you're thinking. Um, oh, 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 okay. But it's funny that it's feels so good to do something like that together um, mm -hmm. and to feel um, just the power of our, our unity and our community, like mm -hmm. being a woman is part of it, but this time women and men like calling for help and relying on each other in times. Um, the song is a really great example of that happening and it feels so good. I've, I have definitely been in a place in my head before where it, it's been hard for me to ask anybody to help and I needed to do it all myself. And I needed to prove that I could, I needed to prove that I could write the whole song. I needed to prove that I could do all the engineering for everything up until we got into the studio, whatever it is. Like I've, I've reached a new place where I, I really feel centered in, in understanding like what, how much energy I have, first of all, and where I want to pour it. And, um, what I know that I'm good at and what, what then I can open up and go, Hey, I need help. Like I've gotten to the edge with this and I need, I need feedback. And I'm not too proud to like say, Hey, check this out and tell me what you think. Um, and that spirit has been so fulfilling and so good. And that's also part of the reason for so much more collaboration from me lately. It feels really good to have that input from other artists um, and friends. Um, so use my voice as a cool great example of that because it was, I was stuck on writing the song. Like I, I had had it in the, like the bulk of it kind of for like two years, like just slowly building, which is cool because as everything was happening, um, a line, oh my God, I'd have a great idea for something to say. And the lyrics were what were driving the song so much. Just, just looking at injustice and, and, and feeling like my, my voice needs to be heard. Our voices need to be heard. Those things are coming out, but then I, I just didn't know what to do for the chorus. And my one of my best friends, Dina from Viridia, um, lives here in town. And um, it was at the end of last year. And I was just like, I don't know. I was like, do you want to just come over? I don't know if we're going to write something or you want to just like hear song. Like, can we just like listen to each other's songs and hang out? And we did. Um, and I wasn't thinking that we were going to work on that one, but I played it for her and she loved it and instantly like, had an instinct about um, what to do on the part that I was stuck on. And it was this fast process, but um, letting her in, letting anybody in to any form of writing for Evanescence is really precious to me and um, to all of us. Uh, so it's, it's a sensitive thing and it's not that we never do, but never with like a songwriter. It's like, it's a friend. It's somebody who's in the process. It's, you know, the producer. Um, and it was just so beautiful that it came from Dina like that because it was just purely from her heart and wanting you to just, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it was this perfect, that's what it was supposed to be. You totally nailed it. Yes. And we just 
spun around the room together in this room, like walking in a circle, singing that, oh, and like the part, like covering our ear and then like singing it together and be like, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so starting from that, um, then moving forward into taking it to the next place with the band and us like making it into a song as it's brewing, like I'm hearing that call and thinking, I want this to be a group. And it felt like the more that I called in for help and the more that I opened my hands up and, and let myself be open um, to unity and togetherness and community like that, the better it was. So um, I just, I thought, why should we just layer like my voice and Jen's voice a bunch of times? We should make this bigger than that. Um, and it was just, so humbling and wonderful um, how easy it was to get everybody to go, yes, I want to do this and record their voice and send it in or come down to the studio. Um, so I love it. I love it because it makes me feel empowered, but it also part of that empowerment has to do with standing together and being stronger together and being willing to like hold hands with your friends and like go forward as, as a group, as a team. I think that's a, a a beautiful way to describe that. And I completely get what you mean when you talk about how it just kind of worked when she, it was organic the way she went about how she wanted to be involved and everything. It's always going to feel better than, you know, paying somebody to come help and write something, which people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's gonna sound, it's gonna, you're going to feel so much more passionate about it when somebody yeah. gets so close to you and it's an organic thing. Yeah. Um, you talked about the song. You talked about needing the feedback. So I have to ask, What's it like knowing the album, I'm assuming, is still due for 2020, right? I think so. I don't know. Okay. I'm considering we... this release. Like, we're just kind of doing it different. Right. So we're really, I know it probably feels like old school, just like releasing the singles first, but it's going yeah. along. <laughs> I just kind of want to give each song its moment. Um, it's been really satisfying to have each moment, like, with the fans, just to focus on one song at a time instead of just like, going, here you go, here's the whole album. I hope you like it. And everybody's going to talk about the songs in their own time and it's just, and then it's gone. And I mean, it's not gone, but it's, it's right now we can't tour either. So we don't get right. to hash that back out every night on stage and like pour love into those songs. We only get just that moment of, of release and then interacting with the song for a while after. Sorry, you can finish your question. Oh no. Well, then my question was going to be that was, is, does that make the online feedback and, and feedback from your friends even more vital because you can't tour the songs now, at least, uh -huh. at least currently? I try not to rely too too hard on social media feedback. That's smart. I, I know that uh, I know that's not the whole picture uh, mm -hmm. of reality, and I think we all need to keep that in mind. Um, mm -hmm. But but the the responses have been overwhelmingly positive, and yeah, it feels really good to go look because I get to, to feel that and see that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been really cool to have the time to interact with our fans during the releases like this. Normally. Um, you know, it is in a live setting, which is awesome and visceral and there's nothing like it. Um, but to to have more time to focus on like kind of communicating with them um, online and, and, and everything has been really nice. Um, it's been nice to just pour into that. When uh, just as I mentioned here, because we're talking about live shows back in the day, I remember you guys coming here to I can't remember the location. It was outside in uh, Portsmouth, I think. And I went and saw you guys there with my little cousin. She was dying to go see you. So I was tasked with keeping her safe there. Okay. And so I brought her to the show. We're right up front in the pit. And I held her up on my shoulders while you performed. And she was crying while she was watching you. My cousin Ashley, who now lives in Australia because she's a grown up and married and I'm old. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it was such an amazing experience. And that was actually the first time I got to see you guys do that uh, cover of Thoughtless uh, from Corn. That was cool. Which was, which was really cool, right? That, yeah. Um, and uh, bringing that back to another connection you have to this area when actually this station specifically back in 2003, you guys were coming through here and you were here in the studio okay. and you did an acoustic version of bring me to life, which like blew up. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so it's oh, this cool okay. thing, yeah, it's this cool thing that we get to point to and say like, yeah, they did that here. Us, yeah, that's cool. It was, it was really, really cool. So okay. it's just a neat connection you have uh, here with this area when we're talking about touring and not being able to tour. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I um, look forward to coming back again for sure. Oh, trust me, people are really looking forward to you coming back. Uh, we get, we, I can see in the side here, we've got people commenting constantly about wanting you to come back. Oh, cool. um, we'll do it. Area. So people are really it. excited about it. <laughs> um, now, the, uh, the I wanted to ask you about this too because back in the day, I, I, well, even still, I've seen a lot of, we'll say, um, I don't know if I want to call it gothic imagery or styling or whatever in, in all of your art. Um, 
but it makes me feel like you're a fan of the uh, the spooky and the uh, the dark, which uh, I think is great because I'm a fan as well. And we're now into spooky season here. It's it's <laughs> Halloween is coming. Yeah. Uh, what what are you gonna do for Halloween this year? I think that we were just talking about this week, so this isn't like an official announcement, but we've we've been talking about this um, virtual performance of some kind that we need to do in October. Um, that we've we've been using that to help in, encourage people to go vote. You know, um, mm -hmm. go check your registration, whatever. Go to headcount. Um, then you can see you can get access to like a private virtual performance thing. I think we're just going to put it on Halloween because Halloween is is such a a thing for us like normal normally we're on tour in this part of the year um and when we are lucky enough which is fairly often to have a show on halloween that's always like a special event you know to i don't know whether it's playing a little piece of like the michael myers theme or whatever like <laughs> yeah. or wearing stupid costumes it's just like we love Halloween. You grow up and you don't get to celebrate Halloween the same way, you know, as when you were younger. And I, it's kind of become a thing that is, is fun when we can tie it to our band. So I, I'm not saying that I'm going to go in costume on that night, I'm not excited. <laughs> but um, I think that's the night that we're going to just um, do our little virtual thing. That way we can still be together with the fans during that. Okay. Well, fans, you're, you're listening to her right now. Make sure you keep tabs on what she's doing because you might be busy on Halloween. Um, tell, the, tell the kids, sorry, the candy can wait. No. <laughs> candy should wait. <laughs> the, can, the candy realistically candy probably will wait for a lot of people. Candy should wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Until things get back to more of a normal, I think a lot of people have that plan. Um, speaking of which, so, you know, with the world being what it is right now, what is the first thing you're looking forward to doing when the world gets back to normal? we want to play these songs live, not to make it all about, yeah. that, um, but um, having the um, the delay and that satisfaction is just going to make it that much more urgent. Um, so um, I am, when things get back to normal, that's going to be our, our focus. We're making our focus all about um, the creation of the music now, which is, you know, it's the right thing for this time. There's nothing else to do and there's nothing, I mean, there's plenty of things that can distract me, but yeah. Oh, there's always distractions. <laughs> but yeah, but it, it, this is that. And then when when we can, we're going to be just um, really chomping at the bit to be able to play these songs live. Fair enough. That's a solid point. My answer was going to be something along the lines of, um, I, you know, go out to eat, yeah. maybe maybe hug somebody. Travel. Uh, like I, yes. it's weird to be stuck here when I'm not. I haven't even been here that long. So it's just kind of like, okay, now we're here at home. All right. <laughs> By the way, I, I'm looking behind you. I just noticed that I'm seeing instruments all over the place. Yeah. Out, uh, guitars, the whole nine yards. Is yeah. that all your stuff or do you have people uh, over jamming still? This is my stuff, but I have it here so that we can jam. Um, yeah. That's my bass. I got that bass this year. I don't really play bass, but I can play bass enough to play bass, you know? Like, I have the same. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it's it's good to have the stuff here because if you ever have an idea, you can just get behind the kit or whatever. It's direct; it plugs right into the tools. So wow, all right, yeah. So you're you're even more talented than I thought you were. Great, I feel even worse. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk to you real quick about uh, you know we talked about the other women that have worked with you on the song and everything, and that you know uh, uh, Taylor Momsen, Lizzie Hale, and Sterling, uh, Dan Jacob, and I wanted to kind of take a real quick group down memory lane, we talk about how back in 2003, you guys were huge, uh, Bring Me to Life had blown up. You guys were kind of at the forefront of, of the rock metal world, and it was really cool seeing a female-fronted band there for a change. Uh, a lot of people hadn't seen that, or at least not very come accustomed to it. And since then, there's been so many bands that have, have come and gone and are still rocking. Uh, we got The Pretty Reckless, Nightwish, Hailstorm, uh, Lacuna Coil, Flyleaf, Otep, I mean, just to name some, right? And you know, some, if not all of those people. And it, it just made me wonder, kind of, as you've seen music evolve and all these bands come and go, have there been these female-fronted bands that you kind of almost in your own way looked up to, idolized, uh, really admired? Oh, yeah. Um, when you're talking about all the people that you just mentioned, um, mm -hmm. that is, that's now. And I, I definitely take... Um, inspiration and feel empowered by their presence in, in our world. Yeah. Um, so we, we all are inspired by each other. I feel like every new thing like that is a win. Um, even there's so many different 
people that you even didn't mention, like across different genres that aren't oh, just yeah, like yeah. Hard rock, like all kinds of, um, those are all awesome um, things. But it's just empowering and encouraging to be like, hell yeah, like, and that's why we, that's why we end up being friends. Like when you find each other, you know, when you're definitely the minority in, in your world, it's like, ah, I found one. Yes. <laughs> thing that girls do or that they don't think girls do that, you know, that we do, let's go do it. Um, so that's, that, that, that's a thing. But, you know, if you're talking about being inspired, the people that inspired me before I got to where I was, there were so many in the nineties women, you know, alternative music and the, the grunge scene and the alternative and the, just the way that radio was all about embracing the weird and the different and the thing that you don't expect. What, what was blowing my mind was all the, the uniqueness and it, it didn't, there were so many women. Um, it didn't occur to me that, uh, to even think about it. It, it, it didn't feel like, like it was different. It, something changed. Um, it's Cause we went from having, I've, I've go down such a long list. You know what I'm talking about? The whole uh, <laughs> Ruka Salt garbage. Uh, I mean, Absolutely. even like Loomis and Bjork, there were things about all that that rocked too. Mm -hmm. And it was all over the place. Um, and then oh. just right at the time when we were almost there, like as we were getting ready, like the, the several years before, like, we came out with our album, it really just took a, a very masculine turn with this, um, I don't know, it, I mean, it's just a, it's what's popular in a moment and I, it's great, there's time for that. Um, but it it suddenly was like, th this is a struggle? It's weird, it's not a cool thing that I always have seen and I, I think part of it comes from coming from that era in the 90s, like I've always seen um, having something that's, not what everybody else has is being a bonus. Like that's what makes it cool. It's it hadn't happened for it. Nirvana never would have broken through if somebody wasn't brave enough to go, whoa, that's not like anything I've ever heard before. So I'm gonna play it. Not, whoa, that's like nothing I've ever heard before. So I can't play it. I think that's wrong thinking. I think that the thinking to some degree has kind of gotten a little bit more fearful. And maybe part of that's driven by the fact that there's so much less money in the music industry and and the powers that be are worried about help we have to please everybody at the same time you can't do that you have to piss people off in rock music you do you have to push the envelope and do something daring um to 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 fit into not fitting like that's what we're supposed to be <laughs> so um yeah like it, it was an interesting thing i do think i think the pendulum is swinging in a different way now than it was then i've seen a lot of change in my time in this but um i don't know I still, I'm just always going to look at uniqueness and differences as a positive. Absolutely. I completely agree with this. I, mean, I do think that that kind of has to do with why, uh, I think the internet is both a blessing and a curse. I think you could agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, social media, particularly a big part of that. But I think it also provides, as you said, sometimes people you know, in the music industry may not see something and like it because it's so different or they're not used to it or whatever. But the internet has provided people with a way to make themselves heard and found. <laughs> That's so true. With, yeah, different app. I mean, we look at somebody who's like one of the biggest stars in the world, Justin Bieber. That guy started on YouTube. Right. Totally. You know, and yeah. it gives people an outlet to be heard and to have their music, their music found. I mean, I think that's how. Isn't that how Billie Eilish started? One of her songs was on SoundCloud or something and blew up. I don't know, but I love it so much. That's my favorite thing of the past year of music. Um, Billie Eilish. Yes, because it's totally pure. It's taking risks. It's different. Um, and. It, it's not like it was put together by some machine. It's completely real and heartfelt and totally weird. And if I may say so, a little bit goth and I love it. And it, and it, it blew everything up and became mainstream. That gives me so much hope for our I, world. I'm going to, I'm going to admit something right now that I'm proud of. I have a vinyl record of Billie Eilish's album at home I, in, my, in my record player. Oh, I need that. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fantastic. But uh, so I, I'm right there with you on, on loving that from the last year. Mm -hmm. um, I, we did have some, I, I saw some people who were asking some questions. A friend uh, I had spoken to, Ashley, huge fan, wanted to know if you were going to tour with uh, Within Temptation when things start rolling again, because she was really disappointed that she didn't get to see it. Before. Me too. Yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely still the plan, for sure. Um, we're planning to do it uh, next fall. So um, hopefully everything, I mean, we, I, we already built the stage production and it wasn't cheap, so. <laughs> we definitely yeah, need to go do that tour. <laughs> um, uh, we got a question here from Aaron who wants to know what band helped you out the most when coming up through the ranks? 
Mm. Ooh, we yeah. definitely need some help. That's that's a good one. Um, <sighs> Aaron put her on the spot. I'm I'm thinking. You know, corn mm -hmm. is one of them for mm -hmm. sure. And part of it's about um, learning, like just learning tour. When we came out uh, with our first album, and it, it was quickly a thing like it was happening it happened quickly for us once once fallen came out um and the venue sizes grew and grew we'd only played a handful of shows ever um we were still like becoming like okay uh let's let's figure out how to do this you know we were still learning uh such a different time uh so you know you go on those tours and you kind of learn how things work from the people that um you get to tour with i remember touring with um corn a couple of times in our early days and um, they were really kind to us. And um, I felt like having having their support and endorsement even um, from such a incredibly power and also incredibly heavy band with a uh, vastly, um, a lot of men that like it. I mean, it, that's what corn, and I love corn. Like I, mm -hmm. that is definitely something that I loved before we made it there. They were big to us. Um, so, to be like totally let in like to the club by them, embraced by them, brought on tour, even like to be invited to be a part of a performance um, with them when they did their unplugged thing. That, that, that was really cool. Um, and we, we've played too many shows to count with them since, but um, they definitely, they definitely did something positive for us in, in the beginning. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, we got a question here from Blythe, which by, by the way, I just have to throw it out there. I'm a huge corn fan as well. Um, Blythe says, uh, first off, you're lovely. Of course, we all know that. Um, but then she also said, uh, what's your favorite collaboration that you've worked with? That's too hard to choose. I know. It's like choosing your favorite kid, right? It's like all your boyfriends are lined up and you have to tell them which one was the best. <laughs> I, I, I mean, right? that's tough. Uh, I, I, I really, really am proud of the body count collaboration from earlier this year. Um, it was such a surprise to have that particular um, thing, like be an option. And I remember hearing about it before hearing the track and thinking, I want to hear that. I, I feel like in my head, like there's a solid chance that this is not going to, I'm not going to be able to contribute well to this um, just because it's very different. Um, and then I heard the song and immediately connected with it and immediately had an idea um, and against time constraints and everything else, somehow like it happened. Um, and I just love it. I love, I love being challenged. I love kind of having, having the opportunity to, um, to do something that I'm not necessarily comfortable with. And I just love what happened with that track. There's, there's so many others though. I, the Wigaki band thing. I just got to do it. I got to sing a little bit in Japanese. <laughs> All kinds of cool stuff, collaborations. That is really cool. Uh, okay, real quick before I let you go, I have a couple of quick questions for you. It is spooky season. I am a huge movie fan, specifically horror movies. So I want to know, uh, Amy Lee, what is your favorite horror movie? Halloween. The um, original? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the original and the second one. And I like the first Rob Zombie uh, remake or whatever, mm -hmm. and prequel, whatever you want to call it. The first Rob Zombie Halloween. I love yeah. that. Too. So it's hard to say that that would be my favorite. You gotta, you gotta say the original. Um, you have to. But yeah, the, like Hall it. the Halloween movies, really, that's 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 my jam. See, okay, that I can I can relate to that. I love those. My favorite is personally Friday the Thirteenth, that genre. But yeah. it's same same basic vein there. They're kind of one of them's a rip off the other. I won't say which one. Um, in any event, uh, other than that, I wanted to know one other question. What is a, a unique talent you have that we don't know about? Unique skill. You already told me you learned how to make sourdough bread, so I wanted to. I know, and <laughs> yeah. giving you all my secrets. Uh, man, I don't know. I'm trying to think, I got kind of good at Animal Crossing this year. And I, I, I didn't know till I played Animal Crossing that you could be good at Animal Crossing. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, I'm not. I yeah, when I say good at it, I say I, I I've spent I wasted a lot of time. I, I really did right at the top of things. I'm I'm not proud of it. I, I did the exact same thing. Yeah, I, I wasted a lot of time too. But let me tell you, my little village looks like an overgrown ivy patch with nothing makes sense. Mine's so. abandoned. My, I have abandoned it. It's sad. It's just uh, a sad place. I I 
I dare not return. <laughs> Just like all those Tamagotchis from the 90s. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I let it die. <laughs> all right, Amy, thank you so much for joining me today. I had a blast. Me too. All right, don't forget the bitter truth. Look for that coming out uh, in 2020. Hopefully, we think uh, use your voice or uh, uh, use my voice is is out. Listen to it now. It is an amazing song if you haven't checked it out already. And also, uh, head count. If you need to register to vote, head over there. Forget how to register to vote. Uh, it's near and dear to Amy's heart. It's very important. You need to get out and vote. But thank you again, Amy from Evan S. and Amy Lee. We rock. Thank you too. Hope to see you, you again. Rock. All right, have a good one. Be safe. You too. Bye.